Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about how to share data between two processes. In a previous video, we used the fork function to create another process uh, from a program. Uh, and in this video, we're going to talk about the pipe function, which is one way to share data between two processes in the uh, Linux operating system, which is used on the Raspberry Pi. And in this case, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi 2. So as I said, the pipe function shares data between two processes. And what a pipe is really made up of is, is really just a two element array. And, uh, and then one of the indexes of that array, the, the, uh, the array with the index of one is the right end of the, of the pipe. And that's right is W R I T E. Uh, that is the end of the pipe that is written to, and then the that array the the array index of zero is the read end, and that's where we would read data from the pipe. And so I'm kind of showing a diagram here. We have a parent process, and we have a parent this uh, array uh, element here, uh, parent to child. I've called it. FD as for a file descriptor. Um, this is that's what that's this is technically called, and uh, and with the index of one, that means it's the right end. And so we're going to write to the the index of one, and that is the input into the pipe. And then on the outside, in the child process down here, we read from uh, index zero, and uh, the operating system will, takes care of the rest. Okay. So now it is possible to write to the same pipe from, bo from both processes and to read from uh, the same pipe from both processes, but it's not necessarily a good idea because there's no guarantee which process is going to read first. And so you can run into a lot of issues with, uh, with timing and uh, race conditions and stuff. Uh, so one of the first things that we do after we create a pipe is we will close uh, the read or write end, depending on whether we're in a ch uh, child or parent process, and we'll get into that a little bit when we, when we uh, look at the code. Uh, if we need to share data uh, in both directions between pro two processes, uh, we what we can do is we can create two pipes. One pipe is to... Uh, send data from the parent to the child and the other pipe is used to send data from the child to the parent and that's what i'm showing here uh, so in the code that we're about to look at i'm using two uh two different file descriptors uh to do that so i have one that i've called parent to child just so it makes it very clear and i have one called child to parent and so as as shown here the parent to child uh, is sending data to the child and the child to parent is sending data to the parent. Okay, and so let's go ahead and look at the code now. Okay, here we have the code that's going to uh, demonstrate how a pipe works. And I really, I, I started off with the, the code from my uh, previous video uh, for the, uh, uh, the fork function. So uh, uh, there's a little bit of it you'll see in here. Uh, there are a couple extra libraries that I have in here. Uh, one is uh, I have this uh, syswait uh, library here, and that's, uh, that's so we can use this wait function at the end. Uh, and I also have the int types, then that's so I can get this uh, unsigned integer eight type. I guess I could get around not not having that, uh, but uh, just make it made it a little bit more clear and easy for me. Um, up here, I'm just using a, a, a macro to define a buffer size of one. Uh, in, in this tutorial, we're going to just send uh, one byte at a time. And, uh, and so uh, we might typically uh, have a much larger buffer size, but uh, just to keep things simple, we're going to send one byte at a time in our, in our pipe. And uh, it's important to note that the a, a pipe is a byte stream. Uh, so if you are going to send something uh, down the pipe, uh, you need to think of it as number of bytes. Uh, so if you're going to send a, send an integer, for example, 
uh, at least on this system, it's four bytes. So um, you will you would have a uh, a buffer size of four bytes if we did that. Uh, but we're going to send a uh, eight bit or one byte uh, message on uh, each write or read of the pipe in this example at least. <clears throat> okay, so uh, as I said, we're going to create two pipes. So I, I need to I need a, a two element array for writing uh, to and reading from uh, in each pipe. So I've created two two element arrays here. So I have the parent to child FD or for file descriptor uh, with a, a two there that creates a two element array. Then I have the child to parent, and that's pretty straightforward. Uh, then we use uh, the pipe function to uh, kind of define those as pipes. And we're going to enclose that within the if statement because this, um, this, this pipe uh, function will return a minus one if there's error. And so we can check for that and then we can just uh, print error to the screen in this case, just to make it simple. Um, but uh, so th what that's going to do is now uh, parent to child FD is considered a pipe and the index one of that is the right end, the index zero is the read end, and the same thing here, and we're going to use those after we fork. Uh, so I've left this, this was in here from the old program, and I'm just going to print the process ID to the screen, that's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, I commented these two lines out here, remember uh, we, in the fork tutorial, if you, if you watched that, uh, that's how we created the new process, and then we we uh, did a little bit of demonstration here. Uh, I'm going to do it differently here. I'm going to call the fork function from within the switch statement, and remember that fork uh, function is going to return uh, one of three values. It's going to return a minus one if there's an error. It's going to return a zero if it's a child process, and it's going to return the process ID of the child if it's the parent process. Uh, so I have three cases, minus one is error, uh, case zero uh, is that it's in the child process, and so we're going to have our, our child process code here, uh, and then the default, if it's not one of those, means that we're in the parent, and it, we have the parent code here. Uh, so let's take a look at the child first. Okay, so as, as I said before, we only want to uh, use one end of each pipe in each process so we can avoid conflicts and, 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 and issues there. So the first thing we're going to do uh, when after the new process is created is we're going to close the unneeded ends of those, those two pipes. So in the child process we're going to close the, the right end of the parent to child F, uh, pipe and that's because we're in child and we don't, we're not going to write to that end of that pipe. We're just going to read from it. And we also want to close the read end of the child to parent process. So that's the first thing we do here. And again, I'm enclosing that within an if statement and checking for a minus one. And if a minus one occurs, then we have an error. And uh, this will print out the screen to help uh, troubleshoot the code if we, if we have any problems. I've already run this though and it, and it works, so we won't see that. Um, and then down here, I just, uh, I'm, this is leftover code from the last program. It's just going to print the process ID for the child. Uh, and then, then we're going to get into a for loop that's going to test that pipe. And we're just going to increment from zero to 100 uh, through this for loop. And on the first line here, um, no, I skipped a step. Uh, up here is the buffer. This is going to be the uh, what we're the tool the 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 buffer we're going to uh, read into or or write out on with the read and write functions to the pipe. And I've made it the buffer size and buffer size is one. Okay, so I just uh, and this is a uh, unsigned integer eight or eight bits or one byte, and that's because we only want to send one byte at a time. Okay, so uh, on this first line in the for loop, we have uh, where you assign this uh, the, the value of i 
to the the buffer and we're casting that as an unsigned integer eight and remember because the we're going to send one byte and uh, this this will never be more than one byte here so it would be just fine uh, we might want to be careful of doing that in in any other program but uh, just for demonstration purposes uh, we're sending one byte at a time now if we really wanted to uh, be able to send an integer um, then uh, we uh, we we could do that it's just it's going to send four bytes instead of one byte okay uh, on the next line we're going to write to the child to parent uh, pipe and uh, and again I'm closing it with an if statement and there's three arguments that you send to the write function first uh, you send uh, the the pipe itself so the file descriptor uh, we're going to uh, I'm sorry the it's the uh, index one of the array that is the uh, the pipe or the file descriptor for the pipe uh, and then the buffer uh, and that's uh, that's going to actually hold the value that's going to go out and then we need to include the size of of the buffer you know how many bytes are we going to send in this write and in this case it's just going to be one but to play it safe so we can write the code differently someday we can just uh, use the size of a function and, and pass the buff to it so it returns the size. Now, the write function is going to return the number of bytes sent. And so, so we're going to, we are enclosing this within an if statement. And if it's not equal to size of buffer, then something occurred, some error occurred and we'll print an error to the screen. Okay. On the next line, we're going to read. Uh, from the parent uh, parent to child uh, pipe and so you can see that we're reading from uh, the index 0 uh, writes index 1 read is index 0 and again it's the same thing we're, and what this will do is it will it will it will read that value uh, from the from the parent put it in the into the buffer and we include the size there actually I should have uh, I should have used the size of buff right there too, but that's okay. Again, we check to see if it's uh, if there was a minus one, which means there was an error, then we would print the error. Uh, on the next line here, we're just kind of going to print out what, what the result was. And this will be kind of an indication that everything's working properly. We're going to print out that uh, we're in the child and we're receiving a value from the parent and the process ID is and we'll get the process ID of the child. So all in one line, we should have the number coming in from the, the parent to the child and, and the process ID of the child. Uh, and then, and then we just, uh, we close the, when we're all done with that for statement, we're going to close the child end of the uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the right end of the child, the parent from the child. Okay. And it's, it's quite, the, it's, it's almost very much the same thing in the, the parent code. Uh, so I'm just going to go through it real quick. We're going to close the child, to parent, uh, right end, and, uh, we're going to close the parent to child read end, and then we're going to just print the process ID of the parent. And then we are going to test our code with that same for loop. Uh, it's written just a little bit differently. So you can see that we are going to write to the parent to child, and that's index one. And we're going to read from the child to parent, index zero. Again, all, all the rest of this is very much the same. And then on the on this line, we actually will say we're in the parent. That's where we're at and we are receiving a value from the child and the process id so same thing as above and that will tell let us let us be able to see what's happening when, the, when this executes and again then we are when that finishes we're going to close the parent to child uh, right end uh, of the pipe and uh, this is this is also uh, important to wait for the other process to finish if you don't include this, uh, what can happen is the last, you, the, the other, your program might close before the other process finishes. And so just include that wait there. 
And so let's go ahead and uh, compile and build and run. And you can see this pops up here. Uh, and just as like you, we would expect, let's just go to the top. Uh, this was uh, left over from the old code. So we're from the main process and it's before the new process is created is 4896. Uh, then here we're in a parent process. It's still 4896. The child process is 4897. And then you can see that it goes back and forth. We're in a child, we're in a parent, we're in a parent, we're in a child. You can see that the timing isn't always the same. Uh, it's just a matter of how the operating system uh, uh, treats the, uh, the execution there. Uh, but the uh, it, what, what's important to remember is when when one of those processes gets to a read function uh, and there's nothing there, it's going to block. It's going to wait for something to read uh, on that pipe. So, and uh, but you can see it goes through and, and it just counts up from zero all the way to 99, which is what we'd expect because we were going to, uh, that's what our for loop did. And you can see that the process ID is consistent. Uh, the child's uh, is the, child process ID and yeah so that's about it um, all the way to the end so uh, that's how that's just the real basics of how a pipe works and uh, in this case we created two pipes so that we could have communication in both directions between a parent and a child process and uh, so that's about it and uh, so I hope you like this video uh, please subscribe uh, like it if you like it and please share it and we will talk again real soon. Thank you.